So today what we're going to be doing is trying to install Chrome OS on an old Nook to create a Chromebox. So welcome to Technoday of Life and my name is Jeff and so today what we're going to be doing is installing Chrome OS on this old Nook which uh, is five years old, 2015 is when this came out. And you might be wondering, well, why do we want to do that? And I'll show you. So just today, as I was about to make this video, I was checking the news, and here we see that Asus is coming out with a new Chromebox, which has, you can get with an i7, i3, or i5, and four or eight gigabytes of memory. Now, it just so happens that this has, I think, an i3 in it, and it has 8 gigabytes of memory, so this would be a great Chromebox. And so let's take a look at this. So again, this is the old Nook. It has a couple USB ports on the front and a headphones port. And then on the back, we have a VGA, HDMI, and a couple of USB ports, power port. port. So pretty modern, even by today's standards. Oh, on the side here, we have a SD card slot, which you can also use in Chrome. So Chrome OS isn't natively supported on older hardware, uh, but what you can do is I'll show you. So we can go to neverware.com and they add in all the drivers for Chrome OS so that it works on most modern hardware. So if you don't know, Chrome OS is basically a minimal OS or operating system and a web browser. So basically it will turn, you can turn an old piece of hardware either in a web browsing computer for your kids, it can be a kiosk, it can be for signage, which is what I'm going to try to do with it. Uh, it can be, you know, remote terminal for whatever you're doing. So basically you have a lot of options with it. So if we go back to the Neverware site, go to Cloud Ready Editions and compare pricing and features. We can see here the Home Edition is free. Education is only $20 annually and even the Enterprise version is only $50 annually. So even if you get the Enterprise Edition, it's actually a pretty good deal. Now, if we look at the differences between the few editions here, so Home, uh, you get the automatic updates. Education, you get support. Professional, you get professional support for deployment and configuration. So any way that you choose to go, it's pretty cheap. Uh, so we're going to go with the Home Edition because that's what we need. So for the Home Edition, click Install Now. So they ask you to check to see if your hardware is supported. Uh, this Nook actually wasn't on the list, but it works fine. So I would suggest just trying to uh, run it and seeing if it works. So then we need to scroll down to where it says download the USB installer and then click download USB installer. Once that's done downloading, then install that. And so once it's started, you'll get to this uh, welcome to the Cloud Ready USB creation utility. First, you need to install a USB stick. So I have a nice Kingston one here, and this one is 16 gigabytes. So we'll put that into our computer, then click Next. And here it says SanDisk devices are not recommended, which I find strange. I don't know why SanDisk devices wouldn't be recommended, but that's what they say. Then click Next, select your drive, and then click Next, and then it will start downloading. So this will take 20 minutes to a half an hour, and so time for some coffee. So once that's done, you want to take out your USB drive, plug it into your new computer, and make sure you set the BIOS to boot from the USB card, and then start that up. So let's start this up. Okay, so when you get to the screen, you want to go down to the bottom right corner where it says the date, and then you want to left click, and then click on Install OS, and then install Cloud Ready, and erase hard drive, and install Cloud Ready. 
Now, of course, if you have anything on this hard drive that's valuable, you should back it up before you actually do this. And so this will take quite a bit of time also, so make sure you have plenty of coffee on hand. After quite a long time, you'll be back at this page. And so how we got here is the machine rebooted. We had to take out the USB drive. And now we can go to Let's Go and then find our Wi-Fi. Then once you've logged in, uh, click Continue and then put in your, and then uh, log in to your Google account. And then once you've logged in, you can click Get Started. Now we're in Chrome OS and you can click that exit sign. So click on the time and then we want to click on proprietary media components available, click on that. And it will bring up this web browser and it will show you basically what to do. So we want again, click on the time, click on the wheel. That will take us to settings. And then we want to click on media plugins. And here you can install Adobe Flash and the other proprietary media components. So we're just going to install the proprietary media components and this will take a few minutes and accept that. And once that's installed, you need to restart and then log back in. And now you have a fully functioning Chrome box. So I will leave a link in the description where you can download the software. So this is a nice and easy way to make your own Chrome box on some spare x86 hardware that you have at home. So that's it for today. I hope you found this helpful. Make sure you like and subscribe. And if there's anything you'd like to see a video on, make sure you put it in the comments down below. And a special thank you to all my patrons who without your support, this channel would not be possible. And if you haven't already, please think about supporting the channel you love. Thank you.